You're listening to the worst marathon ever. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield, and we are both very, very drunk. This is the West. Where is it? On the list of, 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 of marathons. The second worst? Second worst marathon ever. <clears throat> and where is it on the list of rules? This is rule number 10. Okay. There is no rule. Okay, I already did that joke. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> number 10. Pull apart the stories you like. What you like in them is a part of you. You've got to recognize it before you can use it. So this has nothing to do with writing Ratatouille. I don't think so. This is just, here's how to be a better writer for Pixar? Yeah, I think this is a general know your strengths. Maybe, this is exactly know... what we've been doing for the last four hours. <laughs> right? Picking apart stories that we like. Many of them were Pixar. Some of them were others. Recognizing what we liked about them. And discovering... That, and the that things, I like them because that's something within me? And the, yeah, the things that you like about them are a part of you. And once you know that, you can use it to your advantage. You can use it in your stories. You can make it a thing. On purpose. Okay. What is your favorite moment in 3? Toy Story 3. Favorite moment in the whole movie? That's hard because I have to admit that's one that I've seen less. Right, but there's there's have. there is a correct answer to this. Sorry to be our professor. Favorite, but there is moment. a correct answer. Oh, to this. okay, you're going to tell me what my favorite my favorite <laughs> moment is when Big Baby. I don't know. Oh my gosh, the Big Baby scene! I've forgotten about Big Baby. <laughs> no, my favorite moment, obviously, I, I, it probably is the correct answer. It's the the bit at the end when they. Realize that they're done. They have no way. No, there's nothing else that they can do. And they all take each other's hand so that they can fall into the furnace together as one family or whatever you want to say it is. That's the moment that makes you tear up. The moment that really means something in it. And, and then ask yourself why... Is that your favorite moment? And what does that say about you? And then you can do one for me if you want. Okay. Uh, I guess... Or we can end. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's my favorite moment because that's the thing that matters to me is to the, the people, those that are around me, those that I love, I guess, would be the most important things to me. And... Being able to just be with them, even if it's our final moments, is uh, what makes life worthwhile. And, uh, what was the second question? But what, but what does that say about you, going hand in hand with the, the woman? Yeah, yeah, how do I recognize it? How do I use it? What is that? I don't know. That, that, I guess, means that I can know that that's important. That's something that I should try and put into a story that says that you know that what one of the things at the center one of my islands what are they what were they personality islands or was that <laughs> one of my core memories is uh yeah just that the family and and friends those that i love i guess are the most important things and telling stories that demonstrate that I guess can can be really important well see that one is harder to know whether that was the correct answer or not because it's <laughs> something about you so okay uh, what is your favorite scene the most important part of Bugs Life okay I was hoping you'd say Bugs Life the scene where Hopper sees the real bird and thinks that it's a creation of the bug, the ants, another fake bird. And he laughs it off and the bird gets him. That, that's my favorite scene in that movie. And I don't know that it's the best, but <laughs> I mean, the people will say the pill bugs because they're so much like the minions. My favorite scene, just 
for the hell of it in that is when uh, Hopper is talking to the, the grasshoppers that don't want to go back. And he says, let's say an ant is one of these this pieces of grain. Here, boom, and he throws it at him. Did that hurt? No. Why not? Because it's tiny. How about this? <laughs> no. And then he goes, boom, and he pulls the plug, and they all come down and just crush them. And he goes, how about that? Just the, I don't know, the, the bad... The Kevin Spacey. Yeah, the bad assery of that bad guy there is just inspiring. And that's why you like that. And, and what can that I don't know what that says about you, me, yeah. but it's your turn. So, <laughs> well, I, I love it because they failed earlier with that. I mean, they worked hard with that fake bird, and they failed. They'd almost succeeded, but because of that, the flea that lights him on fire. Because of that, he he allows himself to be killed. Basically, Hopper does. His, his assumption, you know, I, I just, I love that because it's, it's sort of misdirection. It is a, you know, we've seen it, there's this thing that didn't work. And then the exact same thing happens and it does work. And also just because, you know, he gets his comeuppance or whatever. You know, their plan was a solid one. But it took a real bird to solve, to for the plan to work. I don't know what that says about me, except for that I, 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 you want to come up with a clever moment where the villain thinks that he's smarter than the heroes. And, and maybe many times he is, but not this time. Uh-huh. That is seems... another one of your tricks? Yes. <laughs> wow, people are still driving around? It's two in the morning on a four-wheeler at this hour. Either when that or you, you have tremendous gas. When you're dedicated, you're dedicated. It seems like that moment, I, I wish I could replicate that moment with, uh, you know, a villain in a story kind of thing. Where, where his own hubris brings him down. Where his own arrogance, his own sense of superiority, and maybe even invincibility is his comeuppance. A, a very underrated movie, Bugs Life. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with it a lot. Uh, yeah, there were a couple where he's like, okay, I hope he says this. If he says inside out, this is what I'll say. <laughs> but what if he need is Bug's Life, because I thought of the bird. The bird will work. Cool. All right. Do you have more to say on that? It's a. It's kind of a weirder rule than any of the other ones. It's like a look at yourself. Find out what's at your core. You can't use that. You can't be a special flower unless you understand yourself. But you, <laughs> seeing what you like in something and analyzing why you like it is a big part of understanding story. Yeah, I, I think And that's... a lot of people don't do that. It's just like, yeah, I like Transformers 3. Why? Explosions. Smooth, it was explosions. Oh, and there's the girls. Ugh. And I was like, okay, why? Why do you like explosions and girls' asses? asses. And the guy's like, well, I mean, just surely there's somebody that likes Transformers Three that can point to a scene, not the loving close-up of the girl's ass in IMAX. But why does it work? Why do, you know, my favorite scene in The Empire Strikes Back and is your favorite scene in The Empire Strikes Back. We've had this discussion, but why? Why does it give me chills to see it over and over and over again and to talk to somebody and become emotional 30 years later when I would describe it to somebody else, you know, of Luke's realization and, and, and no, I, you know, I just, oh, there's so many layers to that. And maybe there aren't. In the actual movie. But I have given Empire Strikes Back and that personal revelation so many layers of what Vader is thinking Luke will do and why Luke jumps and all of that because it speaks to me and it, 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 it grabs my imagination. And it's like, why why would Luke choose to kill himself and, and all that stuff as a little boy? It's like, why would, what would you do? Learning about yourself helps you as a, as a storyteller. Pulling apart your favorite movies... Also, I think, helps you as a uh, storyteller. 
to find out what it is that you like, why that movie is your favorite. Why do you think Princess Bride is such a great film? And there's no new idea under the sun. Shakespeare said that hundreds of years ago, <laughs> before television. What? Before Alex P. Keaton took, <laughs> before Richie Cunningham took two girls to the prom at the same time, unbeknownst to each other. So all you can do is take something that's been done and do, put your twist on it. Put yourself on it. Why does... Mike Seaver take two girls to the prom? <laughs> no, no, no. Why, why, why does that moment speak to me of, you know, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father? And how can I apply that to a story that I'm writing someday and try and create that? See, that one is hard because that in our lifetime is the most famous surprise in a movie. Most famous twist in a movie. And so, you know, I, I'm sure people have tried to replicate it over and over and over again in their own way. What a twist. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult to pull that off. But, but surely I could look at how Luke feels upon discovering that and try and make one of my characters feel that way. Or why would I want to see that scene again and again and again and again? What is it about? I mean, I've, I know how it ends. I know every moment of that movie. But I, but, but, and I can't even say. I'm not introspective enough to tell you, except for that if I had a podcast that was just about Star Wars, I could do an episode every week about Star Wars. Uh, well, that would be good because podcast is about it. Yes, that's that's right. Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, I, I I know you were trying to sum up, and 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 that was a wise decision. But just taking something, finding out why it speaks to you and what that says about you, can help you do your version of that in something else. Masters of the Universe, the nineteen eighty six seven <laughs> Masters know. of the Universe, greatest movie ever made. Totally rips off the ending of Back to the Future. And that's why it's the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> Somebody saw Back to the Future and they're like, oh, you know what I loved about Back to the Future? And they said, and it's like, well, hey, we're working on a Masters of Universe movie. Let's rip that off. <laughs> okay. And someday in 1999, a middle-aged young boy is going to see Masters of the Universe for the first time and say, that's the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life. And then in 2015, he'll announce it to the world. Yeah. And then he'll say, thanks for listening, everybody. Don't say goodbye. Say good journey. I'm See? Nick Anklevich. Wow. And I'm Rich Outfield. Till all are one. <laughs> Wait a minute. That was Transformers. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it.